Coming up on this edition of the News Feed. With recent news of e-cigarette deaths in the U.S., what kind of impact has vaping had among the Virginia Tech community? Plus, this month Virginia recognizes bicycle and pedestrian safety. We'll look at local efforts in keeping pedestrians in particular protected. And as another business calls it quits in downtown Blacksburg, a new one sets up shop with an unconventional concept. These stories and more are just ahead. Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of the News Feed. I'm Alessandra Young. Vaping and juuling have become a serious health issue for young adults across the United States. Not only is it affecting people nationally, but it's also becoming an issue on Virginia Tech's campus. News Feed reporter Nathan Brennan has more on the story. In recent years, Virginia Tech has been known for its student happiness and wellness. While Virginia Tech continues to emphasize happiness and health on campus, a common vaping device named Juul has taken a toll on students. In the past month, there have been a reported six deaths in the United States directly related to the Juul. In addition to these deaths, there have been more than 450 cases of lung illness associated with e-cigarettes. While it is becoming more prevalent in young adults, the impact has also directly affected Virginia Tech students. Students. Yeah, I think that in particular Virginia Tech or, or college students go along with kind of the youth um, pattern of use. So we see it a lot in high school and actually even middle school. And so whether people started using then or now, um, I think it's just kind of a continuum of that. Students are starting to realize the risks behind the jewel and are taking precautionary measures. Yes, I definitely have tried to cut back and have cut back. I got rid of any jewel that I had and recently I've just been seeing all this stuff about these kids dying and I'm like whoa don't really want that to be me tomorrow in the news ending up in the hospital. Through education and culture change Virginia Tech students and faculty believe that this epidemic can be resolved. This brings hope in the community that there will be no more jewel related deaths in the future. Reporting for the news feed I'm Nathan Brennan. A mysterious man has been attempting advances on female students on the Virginia Tech campus. Most cases have occurred on the drill field and common areas around Newman Library and the Squire Student Center. The unidentified man is pulling women aside and asking them for directions to specific buildings on campus. After receiving the directions, the man goes to hug them and suggests they give him a kiss on the cheek. Students have been sharing their experiences in classes as well as online in hopes to bring awareness to more people on campus. Report it to someone, um, like a local authority or um, someone that you, that you trust and that will know will take action and then spread the awareness because I think it's really important that people are aware of what is going on in this community. The Virginia Tech Police Department is working to find the man responsible to prevent future occurrences. However, it is still unknown the man's motivation for his behavior. Campus police are advising everyone to look out for the man on campus and warning them to avoid any contact no matter how harmless it, the situation may seem. Reminding students that if you see something suspicious, say something. Virginia Tech's campus received an unexpected visit from some local wildlife. A bear cub was spotted by students wandering around campus. Recently, outside of Cochran Hall and West Ambler Johnson Hall, a wild bear cub was roaming around searching for food. Several Virginia Tech students gathered to take pictures and videos of the bear. While a bear cub may seem harmless, Officer Jason Miller of the Virginia Tech Police Department warned students to never approach a wild animal. Uh, you should always call 911. Uh, give it, let us address the issue, and then primarily make yourself safe. Give it as much room as possible. Uh, do not attempt to corner it, capture it, uh, video it. Uh, the biggest thing is animals are scared, so you want to try to give them as much room to escape um, as possible. If, you, if they do attempt to escape, that's fine. Stay in your location because that is where the police are going to respond, and you can point out the general direction that the animal went. 
Virginia Tech Police Department and the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries quickly responded on campus. Officials removed the bear from campus and released it into the wild. September may be Bicyclist and Pedestrian Awareness Month in Virginia, but Virginia Tech works to keep everyone traveling across the 2,600-acre campus safe year-round. With so many people walking, driving, riding bikes or scooters on campus, being aware is the first step to being safe. Newsfeed reporter Sarah Cundiff has the story. If you don't live or work in a city, then you may not have much interaction with pedestrians and bicyclists on any given day. However, if you live in a college town like Blacksburg or attend one of the largest public universities in Virginia, like Virginia Tech, you are probably used to sharing the roads and sidewalks. With thousands of students and faculty members racing to make it to class on time, safety can sometimes take a back seat to the bustle of quickly maneuvering across campus. Virginia Tech police officer Micah Pascarell says it may take more effort, but believes it is possible for pedestrians and bicyclists to travel safely. So I think the most important thing for them to know is that they just need to take ownership of their own safety and just be, to be aware of their surroundings, whether they're walking, uh, you know, using a scooter, driving a vehicle, they just need to be aware of uh, both themselves and the other people that are either on the road or on the sidewalk with them. But safety does not fall entirely on the shoulders of pedestrians and drivers. Virginia Tech has taken measures to make campus travel as safe as possible. There is signage to help them see that. Uh, we also have a lot of bike lanes. The sidewalks uh, around campus are generally well paved, pretty wide, allowing for uh, two-way traffic for pedestrians and also your, your scooters, your bicycles. Even still, Virginia Tech sophomore Lauren Pittis says it can sometimes be a challenge to get across campus safely. Sometimes when you're in the inner area, it gets kind of tricky and then the buses never really stop for you, which makes sense, like they have places to be, but at the same time, it's a little bit scarier in there. And even some of the bikes will like come right past you and like knock you over a little bit. Bicyclist safety on Virginia Tech's campus begins with people being aware and seeking not only to keep themselves safe, but those around them safe as well. Reporting for the newsfeed, I'm Sarah Cundiff. Just ahead on the newsfeed, Virginia Tech recently launched a safety study on electric scooters on its campus. But are these scooters safe for the environment? And we'll take a look at the recent unique changes made on a 30-year-old restaurant in Blacksburg. That story and more after this break. Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She'd carry two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me and I love it. Welcome back to the news feed. I'm Alessandra Young. Many Virginia Tech students have been seen riding around on orange scooters called spin scooters. VTTI is partnering with spin scooters to try and cut down on the car traffic in an environmentally friendly way and to help students get around the campus safely. But just how environmentally friendly are these e-scooters? Chitty Raju, operations lead for VT Spin, says Virginia Tech is making their best effort to reduce cars on campus in an eco-friendly way. But they still have to drive around campus to pick up the scooters and take them back and forth to the warehouse for charging, which requires gas. Really, we're just waiting for technology to catch up, um, commercial technology specifically. Uh, so. There's not really that much we can do about that right now. To make the scooters available to the Virginia Tech community, we really just have to drive them at this point. Raju says the end goal is having a system where only the batteries on the scooters need to be replaced, instead of having to drive the scooters back and forth, which would ultimately cut down on gas usage. But until technology catches up, the scooters will be driven back and forth from campus for the next 12 months. Efforts toward an eco-friendly Virginia Tech campus are in full swing. Sustainable Blacksburg is a nonprofit that supports this mission with community events. They encourage people to participate in tours of stadium woods, open forums, and bike excursions during Blacksburg Sustainability Week. 
These events just scratch the surface of Virginia Tech's progress. Since 2010, the Green Request for Proposals program accounts for $650,000 worth of sustainable campus improvements. Recent projects include water bottle refill stations, solar charging tables, and bike racks for residence halls. We have worked hard to make it convenient for, for people to, to bike on campus, so um, we put in a lot of, um, of bike parking. Um, right now we have capacity for 5,100 vehicles on campus. Sustainable organizations like VT Alternative Transportation are working hard to see more projects through. All in all, the future of campus sustainability is looking up. Sycamore Deli has officially closed its doors as of this past summer. This marks the end of an era for downtown Blacksburg. However, there is good news for the venue's future. Newsfeed reporter Signe Gagnon has more on the story. Thanks, Alessandra. Sycamore Deli's reign may have come to an end, but the building certainly didn't stay empty for long. A new contender, the Milk Parlor, opened for business in mid-August. After three decades in business, Sycamore Deli certainly left big shoes to fill. Luckily, Blacksburg's newest bar, the Milk Parlor, has stepped up to the challenge. But why call it the Milk Parlor? Many speculate that the name has something to do with the restaurant's revamped menu, which exclusively offers grilled cheese sandwiches and ice cream sundaes. However, this may not be the case. We're trying to come up with a name that would address a, a venue, a restaurant, and a bar. Um, and they had originally sent a list of like quite a few different names, a lot of which had to do with like cheese or like toast at this or that. Um, and Milk Parlor just kind of like really stood out. It's kind of whatever you want it to be. We have a lot of grilled cheeses and we're starting a nice uh, white Russian menu. So stay tuned for that. The Milk Parlor strives to create a new identity for itself while still retaining some of Sycamore Deli's essence. The Sycamore Deli was well, kind of more of a towny bar, a little more of a dive, but this one we're trying to make a little more upscale. It's very nice, it's very cute, great aesthetic. So hopefully in the future, it'll be a place where more people want to come. The milk parlor may be new on the scene, but its uniqueness is already commanding Blacksburg's attention. Simply the name alone sparks discussion. If you don't want to be left out of the fun, head on over to Draper Road and see for yourself. Just like their front sign says, the cheese is grilled and the beer is chilled. I'm Sydney Gagnon, reporting for the Newsfeed. Back to you, Alessandra. Thanks, Sydney. Over the past year, people across America have been putting down the beer cans and cracking open a fresh, cold spike seltzer. Whether it's game day, a chill night with the boys, or a night out with the girls, this beverage can be found in hand. Although the drink has been on the shelves of local grocery stores for almost eight years, it has only recently gained popularity. Newsfeed reporter Emily Horvath has more on the story. The spike seltzer trend has been sweeping the nation and gaining popularity in all age groups, beginning with college students. The idea started back in 2013 with the original brand that was simply named Spiked Seltzer. Many other brands have tried to push their way into the spotlight since then, but the one that brought the population around was the White Claw. I think it's definitely a bigger thing. Like a year ago, if you asked people about White Claws, they probably wouldn't say much about them, but now, it's definitely become more of a thing, like everyone knows what they are, knows that they exist, knows different brands of them, knows people who drink them, so I think in just in a year's time, they've, they've become quite a popular drink. Due to the high demand, many other companies like Natural Light, Smirnoff, and Truly have also rose to fame by releasing their own form of the hard seltzer. With so many different brands and flavors, college students are not the only age group that have taken a liking to hard seltzer. My drink of choice, I guess it depends on kind of who I'm with um, and what I'm doing. I do find them a lot more refreshing than beer, and I'm not a great wine fan. So, um, uh, yes, I would, I would choose to order a White Claw. This trend started within the last year, hitting its peak during the summer of 2019. Only time can tell how much longer the hard seltzer brand will stay afloat in the public eye. But right now, it appears like it is here to stay. Reporting for the Newsfeed, I'm Emily Horvath. That'll wrap up this edition of the Newsfeed. If you have a story idea for the Newsfeed, let us know. Send us an email at thenewsfeednrv at gmail.com. And as always, you can connect with the Newsfeed on Facebook and Twitter.
Thanks for watching. I'm Alessandra Young.